Psyche Science here. Ha! Ah, number 33, the big threes. Oh, wow. So much news this week. Short week, because it was a little late last week. But let's get into it. Booyah! Anyway, all our Psyche Science friends in Hawaii, I hope they're okay. Luckily, Azel was not that bad. It's just passing through now and been downgraded to a tropical storm. But Hurricane Julio is quickly on his tail. So I wish all you guys luck and uh, stay safe. And hopefully it will be as minimal as Azel was. So keep your head down, shelter in place, I guess. Whatever they're asking you to do and be safe out there, guys. Oh, James Cameron. Deep Sea Challenger 3D premiered just the other day. Can't wait to see it. Haven't had a chance yet. But I will get out there and see it. Uh, I'm Max about his trip oh so far down to the Marianas Trench. Challenger Deep. Has not been visited since the Trieste was there. A lot of really interesting stuff online about the comparison of the trips and the technology involved. If you get back to the East Coast, make a visit to the sub. He donated it. So, really cool stuff. I can't wait to see it and learn more about the trip. And hopefully, we'll learn more about what was found and get more trips there soon. Ah, Blue Ocean Film Festival finalist. Soggy Science friends, Madison Stewart, finalist. Congratulations on Shark Girl being nominated. And White Shark, uh, our good friends Fred Buell and William Winram and many others have been nominated and finals, our finalists in multiple categories. Woo -hoo -hoo. And it will be in Monaco this year. So if you're in Monaco, check it out. And the all forever dominant Shark Week is coming upon us quickly. Shark Week! Well... Sci-Fi took advantage of that by having our Sharknado Marathon and Corny Shark Movie uh, Fest. And we've had lots of Twitters and news articles and announcements of new fake documentaries. Megalodon, the new evidence. Fake! So don't get, caught, get caught, so caught up in the hype. Hopefully some science will come through. Um, but friend of Soggy Science, David Sifman, is uh, produced for Scientific American. A list of the Sark scientists to follow tweets from during Shark Week so we can dispel the myth from the science. And uh, I think the science is much more exciting than some of the stuff. But hey, it could be fun. We'll see. Get on there and tweet back. See what you think is fact or blown out. It'd be a fun activity. Of course, you're contributing to Shark Week then, but hey, it's kind of here to stay, I think. Anyway, so, fun times. Um, more news from Hawaii. Some scientists have done some very deep diving on Loale, no, sorry, Loihe, hey, seamount. It's a little seamount off of uh, the Big Island, which is in 3,000 feet of water, I believe. And it's 22 miles. It's the next Hawaiian island in the Hawaiian long chain. So, they've gone down there and they found that there's a whole class of bacteria down there that oxidizes iron. Uses iron, oxidizes it, and takes the energy. And apparently it's found all over the place when there's iron. So it's not just in these deep communities. And it's relatively rare, but they're finding it more now. And that particular seamount has a ton of it. And these are Zeta Proteobacteria. They're kind of sort of early primordial extremophile bacteria, which is really cool. And they use iron as energy. They literally create rust to get energy. And David Emerson and a whole fleet of other people produced an article on that this week. And much like the sulfur fixing bacteria on the mid-Atlantic mid Ridge and some of the deep vents, this also vents, but it vents heavily in iron. So yet another chemosynthetic uh, community that we really didn't know much about but apparently is much more widespread than we thought, even in freshwater and things like that. So I look very much forward to learning more about that. Keep up the work, guys, and tell us some more. It's really fascinating when we find stuff that doesn't use light to primary produce. 
So these can build structures and like little spires and stuff and it integrates the iron into the architecture. So they're really kind of, I don't know, advanced ancient bacteria. <laughs> anyway, on the cyanobacteria and the ancient bacteria front, we talked last week about the toxins in Toledo. Well, can't keep them down, they're back to drinking and it's been cleared up, but sightings of plankton blooms and cyanobacteria blooms are all over the place. They saw one in Eastern Europe right around the same time. And we're seeing a lot more of them. And this is really agricultural runoff. We're fertilizing the water with all kinds of nutrients and it's causing algal blooms all over the place. Not just cyanobacteria, but actually full multicellular algae as well. So we really need to look at our impact and runoffs and things like that. Um, hopefully we'll learn more soon and hopefully we'll keep the drinking water clean. Uh, there's enough threats to it already, like not having enough rain. <laughs> but that's in the Great Lakes and elsewhere. So we'll see what happens. Good friend of Soggy Science, the, her deepness, Sylvia Earle, was awarded the Cronkite Award at Martha's Vineyard at the premiere of her documentary that should be reaching all of you very soon. And it's called Mission Blue. Check it out. It will be on Netflix on August 15th, which is really cool. Can't wait to check it out if you have Netflix. And look for a book coming out from her under the same title very, very soon. So that's good news. I can't wait to hear more, Sylvia. Keep up the good work. And keep winning those awards. We need good reps for the ocean out there. Well, amazing feats of fitness. Some British rowers, a pair of them, both... 53, 55 years old, excuse me, rode across the Atlantic Ocean over 3,000 miles. And they did it in 60 days. That shatters the old record. So they actually did 3,246 miles in 60 days. That's just bonkers. Um, teamwork, it's only the second team to make it across the Atlantic, so that's exciting. But uh, on Ocean's News on the chemical side, it turns out since the Industrial Revolution started in the shallow waters, 100 feet and shallower, uh, sorry, 100 meters and shallower, 330 feet and shallower, mercury levels have tripled. Uh, so they've done some really weird, really cool sampling from deep and all over. Since the Red Industrial Revolution, the overall levels have gone up 10%, but in shallow waters, it's gone up dramatically more, three times as much. Um, since the Industrial Revolution, implying that it's man-made pollution doing most of the mercury pollution. There is some natural sources, but they've been able to shake out that, mostly coming from burning coal and from making cement, of all things. So we hopefully are going to minimize our coal use and get some of that down, but we better look at cement as well. Anyway, that was uh, a really big group of people looking at it, National Science Foundation, uh, some funding, and they did a whole bunch of sampling over the last 10 years and have compared to some levels before. So really cool science there. And on flight 370, we knew it would show up again, except it hasn't shown up, but they have a new company doing the deep search, a Dutch company called Fugro, and they will be taking on the job of going after Flight 370's remains in the south, southern, eastern Indian Ocean. We haven't found the haystack yet, so the needle's far from being found. But these guys know their stuff. They haven't done a lot of ship searches, but they do a lot of deep sea mapping and finding and have multiple vessels. So lots of good tools there, and hopefully we can finally find the plane. Find the plane! Already! Anyway, also... U.S. Freediving headed to Worlds. Please support them. We have only a few days left on the Indiegogo campaign. Donate and share. Please share. Share the post. Tell your friends. We need a last ditch effort to get lots of good funding for the team so they can represent you if you're a U.S. national person or just because you love freediving. Please help. Please. Anyway. Thank you for suggestions, follow me on social media, and get out in the water, find some adventure, 
and get soggy.